Zone training can be complicated, which is fine for athletes, but it also has important health implications for non-athletes. So here are the basics on the why and how of Zone 2 training. Dr. Indigo Sam Milan Group's training are really exercise into six zones based on how your metabolism and muscles respond to different exercise intensities. Zone 1 is like an easy walk, where the mitochondria in your slow twitch fibers are burning mostly fat, but not very much. You can easily carry on a conversation in Zone 1, and it's a good zone for people starting an exercise program and recovery days for athletes. Zone 2 is a little more intense where you can still talk, but with a few pauses or gaps when you need to catch your breath. You are now burning a good mix of both fat and carbohydrate in the mitochondria of your salt twitch fibers. The reason Zone 2 is important is because you're pushing your mitochondria for an extended period of time, say 30 to 60 minutes or longer. In Zone 3, it's noticeably difficult to talk as you switch from aerobic to anaerobic metabolism and also produce more fatigue-causing waste products. So in Zone 3, it's difficult to exercise as long as you could in Zone 2. In Zone 4, there's little if any fat being burned and even more fatigue-causing waste products showing up, limiting exercise time to 15 to 30 minutes or less. Zones 5 and 6 are very anaerobic and intense, which makes them great for high-intensity interval and sprint training. Back to Zone 2. This is the intensity that optimizes mitochondrial function, which gives athletes better engine parts to turbocharge their Zone 4 or peak performance zone. But improved mitochondrial function also means better cardiometabolic health through things like better glucose control and fat metabolism. Watch for my other videos on more of the science and health benefits of Zone 2 training. Thanks for watching, and as always, my answers come from peer-reviewed research.